Sometimes keeping up with all the goings-on in the scientific world can be exhausting, especially as new discoveries are constantly being announced in seemingly every field imaginable. From nuclear energy to dinosaurs to global warming and Antarctica, several new discoveries and announcements have been made recently that are worth paying attention to. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three of the most exciting recent scientific releases and what they mean for their respective fields. Generating nuclear energy similar to that of a star The search for the next breakthrough invention for clean energy has driven dozens of scientific research and experiments throughout the past decade. As scientists concerned with the effect of non-renewable energy on our planet drive the search for a more sustainable option, it seems that they are reaching for the stars, quite literally. Stars are balls of continuously combusting gases, driven by fusion reactions as two atoms fuse nuclei together and release a celestial burst of energy. This energy-generating process has long been an inspiration to scientists investigating alternative energy. But the problem is that when fusion occurs in a lab, the energy required to fuse the two molecules is much greater than the resulting release. To solve this problem, researchers have been searching for ways to achieve ignition, meaning the burst of fusion energy is greater than the inputted energy. And it seems that they might be one step closer to achieving this massive feat. Physicists at the National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California recently conducted experiments that attempted to trigger ignition using an astonishing 192 laser beams aimed at a fuel pellet of heavy hydrogen. The resulting fusion, while not reaching true ignition status, still emitted 1.35 megajoules of energy, which at 70% of the inputted energy was the closest that any lab has come to ignition yet and is 25 times greater than the next highest record of energy emission, which was set three years previously. And despite not qualifying as true ignition, this breakthrough is massively important in the quest for slowly decreasing energy input while increasing energy output in order to reach a net gain of clean, reproducible nuclear energy. Additionally, not only will the findings help researchers to adjust their own experiments in order to keep advancing the field of nuclear physics research, but the potential for the ability to create energy conditions so similar to the self-fueling explosions that occur in a star means that nuclear components of the cosmos and the conditions that they create can likely now be studied in even greater detail. Jeremy Chittenden, a physicist at Imperial College London, has even indicated that it might be useful in studying the conditions of the cosmos in the immediate aftermath of the Big Bang, leading to a better understanding of the way that our universe was formed. As far as relying on the ignition reactions as a source of clean energy, Scientists believe that the key lies in the ability to achieve self-sustaining burn of the plasma, where the heat released from the fusion reactions becomes fuel for more fusion reactions, continuing in a perpetuating cycle. This cycle would exponentially increase the energy yield of the reaction, and these latest experiments from the National Ignition Facility prove that research is bringing us ever closer to being able to achieve such a goal. However, for now, the experiments are still undergoing the peer review and publication process, and it remains to be seen what valuable information analysis of the data will yield. Two new species of dinosaurs discovered on the Isle of Wight One of the most fascinating aspects of paleontology and the study of the mysterious world in which dinosaurs lived and roamed is the fact that we will likely never know of every single species that walked, flew or slithered across the earth, and new species are constantly being uncovered. Most recently, two new species of carnivorous Spinosaurus dinosaurs were discovered during excavations on the Isle of Wight in the UK, leading to fascinating insight about the species as a whole and how they migrated over time in order to spread across the globe before their ultimate extinction. Dating back an estimated 129 million years, the two skeletons were dubbed Riverbank Hunter and Hell Heron based on the environment in which they were estimated to have lived and were surprisingly intact, allowing researchers and scientists to develop valuable insight about this common yet still mysterious species. 
Although spinosaurids are found across the world, the skeletons are usually greatly fragmented and incomplete, making it hard to get a true picture of the body mechanics of the species that would allow us to make educated guesses about how they lived and hunted. However, this research expedition, which was led by scientists from the University of Southampton and published in Scientific Reports, uncovered extraordinarily intact examples of the two species, including such trademark elements as the skulls and tails. These will allow further research to be conducted into how these different species interacted with their environments and hunted their prey. The first specimen, part of the group Ripperavenator milneray, and called Riverbank Hunter, appears to have relied primarily on fish for its diet due to trademark features of its teeth and body shape. The other specimen, which appears to have been closely related to the Riverbank Hunter and likely roamed the earth at the same time, is part of the group Ceratosuchops inferodios and called Hellheron Horned Crocodile Face, and was likely a wetland dweller who relied on that habitat for its food and shelter. Although the two large predators are suspected to have been inhabitants of the region at the same time, it is likely that they hunted different prey, lived in different environments in the same region, or were active at different times of the day or night, so that two such large dinosaurs could coexist together. The two specimens, which were both two new spinosaurid species, also provide valuable information about the diversification and spread of the spinosaurids across the world during the age of the dinosaur. After initial studies, researchers believe that spinosaurids likely originated in the region that is now modern-day Europe, slowly migrating and spreading east and south throughout Africa and evolving into the variety of species that slowly mutated to fit into the new environments like the Riverbank Hunter and the Hell Heron. Paleontologists are still excavating the Isle of Wight regions in hopes of finding even more telling clues that can provide information about the origins and fate of such a mysterious but prevalent dinosaur species. Antarctica's Ice Shelf Eroding Global warming is no new phenomenon, and the effects of it only seem to be getting worse, at least according to scientists who have been studying the cause of the massive A68 iceberg split that occurred in 2017. The alarming rift happened on Antarctica's Larsen Sea ice shelf and resulted in an iceberg the size of Delaware splitting off from the main formation. This significant ice event was then thoroughly studied, and the cause was attributed to the thinning of the ice melange, which is a layer of slushy-like frozen water that typically seals any rifts that occur and keeps the ice shelf intact. Because this has huge implications for the severity of further impacts of global warming on the delicate Antarctic region, scientists and glaciologists quickly began studying the ice melange layer more closely and what they found was concerning. After careful analysis of 11 cracks in the Larsen Sea ice shelf, the same one that the A68 iceberg split from in 2017, they were able to conclude that the thinning ice melange was unable to keep up with the ice shelf, widening one of the rifts in question from 249 feet to 367 feet and growing. The melange layer is a layer of muddy, frozen water that sits between the ice shelf and the ocean water that circulates beneath. A thick melange layer can help protect the ice shelf from rifts that could form, but when it thins, the much warmer ocean water hits the melange layer and causes rifts in the ice shelf above. This follows the hydrofactualization theory, which explains how water can penetrate ice shelf cracks and expand as it refreezes, causing large enough cracks to form in the ice shelf that massive icebergs break off. The ice melange works as a buffer to protect this action, but it appears to be thinning leading to an increase in iceberg deliveries in Antarctica. The particularly concerning aspect of this discovery is that the ice shelves have been hypothesized to prevent glaciers from entering the ocean, and the continued fracturing of the ice shelf into glaciers means that the sea levels will likely rise much faster than anticipated as a result of global warming. The studies utilized observations from NASA's ice sheet and sea level system model with NASA's Operation Ice Bridge mission as well as images captured from satellites of the formation of Antarctic icebergs. Eric Lignot, who co-authored the study that explored the reasoning behind the A68 iceberg split and the resulting consequences of the thinning ice melange, 
said in a statement that the thinning of the ice melange that glues large pieces of floating ice shelves is another way that can cause a rapid retreat of ice shelves in Antarctica due to climate change. With this in mind, we may need to rethink our estimates of the timing and extent of sea level rise due to the loss of polar ice, which can be faster and more impactful than expected. For now, studies continue to monitor the concerning effects of climate change in Antarctica. But what do you make of these three recent releases? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.